What's up guys, I got the Eero 7 and I'm going to show you guys the various ways of connecting it. So I'll show you guys wired backhaul, wireless backhaul, I'll explain that stuff. I'll also answer some frequently asked questions. So, we'll start off with a typical setup and then we'll move on to the Eero mesh system. I also have, I'm going to actually show you, show you guys the connections with these Ethernet cables. I will omit the power supplies in this video and the coax cable, but I will show you guys all the different ways of connecting it. I'll show you guys how to expand your Ethernet ports using a switch. And if you happen to have another Eero, which I happen to have the Eero Pro 6C, for example, I'll even show you guys how to connect the Pro 6C to your existing system. And the same is true for other Eeros, because technically all Eeros are supposed to be compatible with each other. So we're going to start with the typical setup where we have a cable modem and a router. You might have a DSL, you might have an ONT, which is basically a fiber modem. ONT stands for Optical Network Terminal. Uh, or you might have a modem router combo. So let's just assume we just have a modem and then we have the router. So if this is your typical setup, your internet source is going to your router and you might, you might have really good coverage when you're close to this router. However, on the other side of your home, you might not be getting that good enough coverage. And that's the beauty of a mesh system because now you have both of these working together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home. So all you have to do is basically unplug your existing router and put it off to the side. You no longer need this anymore. So unless it's another Eero, and I'll show you guys how to connect that Eero to the system uh, a little bit later in this video. So what you do is, and let me mention this before I connect it to this guy. If you have a modem router combo, you you don't have to disable the router portion. You could enable bridge mode in the Eero. However, that's not recommended. What's recommended is to disable the router portion of the modem. And you could either call your ISP, your internet service provider, and ask them to switch that out and just give you a modem. That's probably, honestly, the best thing to do. Um, or you can actually disable the router portion of that by going by enabling bridge mode or disabling the router or disabling... There might be some... It depends on the model you have. It might be a different option, but you can even call your ISP and ask them how to do that. Uh, but typically there's like a sticker on the modem and it tells you how to access those settings. And then you're gonna have to look in those settings. And again, it depends on the model number you have. So that's why it's, it's honestly, it's just best to ask your ISP to switch it out for just a modem. Okay, so once we do that, we just have a modem. And whether this is the ONT or the DSL or whatever it is that's providing you the internet source, you still keep the ethernet coming out of that port that's providing you an internet access. And by the way, again, I'm gonna omit the coax cable from this video and I'm gonna omit the power sources from this video. And all you do is you connect it to either one of these two ports. And obviously the USB-C is providing power and you're supposed to use the USB set that comes with the Eero, not just any USB-C. But you can use, because these are auto-sensing ports and they're both support up to 2.5 gigabit speeds, you can use any one of the two. Now, notice I said up to 2.5 gigabit speeds. If you, have, if you have internet speeds of 500 megabits per second, you connect it to this, you're not going to get 2.5 gigabit speeds out of this thing. So keep that in mind. These are up to these speeds. And once you connect this, you go through the Eero app and it tells you, kind of guides you along the way, it tells you to power off your modem, wait two minutes, power it on, connect this, and then pick your Wi-Fi name and password. And you can even pick your existing Wi-Fi name and password that you're replacing your router, your of your old router, and your Wi-Fi name, which is your SSID, is also case sensitive, as well as your password, and your all your devices should automatically connect to this one. So once you have that set up, you have now replaced your router with this Eero router. And yes, this is actually a router. However, in the same network, if you have two or more, only the main one hooked up to your modem is acting as the router. This secondary one is acting as an extender, basically. So at this point, we now have replaced that router with this router. This router is emitting that Wi-Fi signal. And technically, if you wanted, you could get away with just using a one pack because this is a router. However, in most cases, you bought the Eero because you wanted to utilize the mesh system to increase your Wi-Fi coverage. And there's two ways of connecting the secondary one. And yes, you can get more than a two pack. You can get a three pack. You can even get two three packs if you want. I mean, there is an upward limit of, I don't know what the exact number is, but typically it's, 
you're not supposed to get more than like five or six of these in the same network if you need that many most people don't need that many um, but if you got a two pack and you're like hey like it's working well but I, I kind of like in this other corner it's not that great you could get another one down the road as well and just add it to your existing network which which is kind of awesome so there's two ways of connecting this thing number one is wireless backhaul number two is wired backhaul wired backhaul can also be ethernet backhaul so we're going to talk about wireless backhaul, which is the easier option. All you have to do is plug in the USB-C power, the power it comes with, and put this 20 to 40 feet away. Now it depends on your place, depends how many walls you, there are and everything like that, but 20 to 40 feet away is a good rule of thumb, and inside the Eero app, it tells you add another Eero, and it detects it, and connects it, and if it's bad, it will tell you like, oh, it's too far away, it's a poor connection, move it. And, and then you could play with it a little bit. But basically, the rule of thumb is like 20 to 40 feet away, depending on your place. So once you have this hooked up to power, obviously this is hooked up to power and so is this. This will wirelessly talk to this, and this is known as wireless backhaul. Now, if you're wondering, do I need to connect to this Wi-Fi name when I'm closer to this one? And do I need to connect to this Wi-Fi name when I'm closer to this one? The answer is no. All you do is you connect to one Wi-Fi name, and when you're walking throughout your house it automatically switches you depending on which one is the more optimal connection it takes a little bit takes like 30 seconds to a minute but it switches you over to the other guy and if you're watching a video assuming you have a good enough internet connection that video shouldn't lag while it's switching you over in fact you may not even know that you switched over to the other one so when you're walking throughout your house it's all seamless basically a common question i get asked decently common is am I allowed to use the ethernet ports of the secondary one if it's wirelessly talking to this guy? And the answer is yes. So you're free to use the ethernet port. So let's just bring another ethernet cable right here. And you can pick any one of the two ports because they're both auto sensing, it doesn't matter. Plug it in and plug the other end to the device you want to connect it to. You want to connect it to your computer, connect it to your computer. You want to connect it to your Nintendo Switch, connect it to your Nintendo Switch. And if you want to connect two devices, you could do that as well. So you could connect, bring another ethernet cable. You could connect the other ethernet cable here. And then you can connect the other ethernet cable to some other device. And in fact, so you, you, you could have this one to your computer, this one to your Nintendo Switch, and, and then you're golden, even though this is wirelessly talking to this one. Now, in case you guys are wondering, technically, if your device is capable enough, connecting something via Ethernet should yield slightly better or even better results than connecting something via Wi-Fi to this because you're eliminating one wi wireless hop. So instead of basically if I have my phone, this one is wirelessly talking to this guy, and this one's wirelessly talking to this guy. However, assuming, let's just assume this phone was a laptop, if I could connect it via Ethernet, well, now I've eliminated one wireless hop, which, you know, typically does yield better results. I mean, it depends on the device itself, but typically that's the better way to go. Now, you have two devices connected and you're like, you know what, I kind of want a third device or four devices. Can I do that? And the answer is yes. You need a switch. Now, there are two types of switches. There's essentially a managed switch and an unmanaged switch. And, and if all you want to do is expand your Ethernet ports, the best way to do it is to get an unmanaged switch. Now, it could be Netgear. It could be TP-Link. It could be D-Link. So it doesn't, the brand typically doesn't matter with the switch. So I can use this Netgear switch, expand my ethernet ports, and then I'm golden. Now let's concentrate on the unmanaged versus managed switch real quick. So an unmanaged is really just designed to expand your ethernet ports. So if all you wanna do is expand your ethernet ports, get an unmanaged switch, cause it costs a lot less than a managed one. A managed one, you can actually use just like an unmanaged switch, however, you're paying a lot more money for it. And the reason you're paying a lot more is because they can actually do extra things. Like you can actually separate out ports to separate out devices. So certain devices can't see other devices, which pretty much that's called VLANs. And we're not gonna get into it in this video. In case you guys are interested on in how to set up VLANs, I've actually done separate videos 
on that. I'll link that down below. But basically, we're just gonna assume, even though this is a managed switch, we're gonna assume we're just gonna use it just like an unmanaged one. And this switch also supports up to 2.5 gigabit speed. So if you have internet speeds of two gigs, and these Eros can support up to 2.5 gigabits each on the ports, then you kind of want a switch that can also do the same. Because if you get a switch that can go all the way only up to gigabit, well, you're going to cap those speeds. So keep that in mind as well. So in this case, this actually happens to be a 2.5 gigabit switch. And I'm allowed to connect to any port I want. Again, I'm, I'm assuming I'm using this just like an unmanaged switch. If I was using it like a managed switch, then the port would can actually make a difference. But in the case of an unmanaged switch or the way I'm using this managed switch, which is just like an unmanaged one, I know I keep saying that, but um, I'm allowed to use any of the ports I want. So I could literally connect this Eero to any port I want and I will get seven additional ports. And there is nothing I need to change. There's nothing I need to go to the Eero app and change. There's nothing I need to do. It will automatically figure it out and it'll automatically expand my ethernet port. So now I have seven other usable ports and if I wanna connect my PlayStation to this, well, I can use any one of the seven that I want, doesn't matter, and plug in the ethernet and then plug in the other side to that device. So that's how you expand your ethernet ports. Wireless backhaul, there's typically a performance hit because of this wireless hop. And in the case of the Eero 7, it's a decent enough drop in performance because it's a dual band system. So the way to work around this, if you want to, is to do a wired backhaul setup. Now a wired backhaul setup is typically going to give you a lot better performance. So much, much better. So the way you do wired backhaul, otherwise known as ethernet backhaul, let's just disconnect the stuff off the secondary one is all you need to do is run an ethernet from this guy to this guy and it doesn't matter again it doesn't matter which port you use obviously this is the free one so we're going to use this one and then run an ethernet cable and run it to this guy and again it doesn't matter which one of these two ports you use whichever one's open you you pick it's auto sensing it will detect it so now we have an ethernet connection going from this guy to this guy and this will ensure you have better speeds because everything is now wired to each other. You have the modem. Let's say you have two gig speeds. Your modem's providing you the two gig speeds. And then it goes in here. Again, the Eero 7 can handle up to 2.5 gigabits. So it goes in here at two gigs and then it comes out at two gigs. It goes through this cable and it goes in at two gigs. So you have now officially made the best possible network you can. So now you might be wondering, well, why isn't everyone doing this if this is gonna give you better speeds? Well, the simple answer is it's not technically always possible to do because, you know, do you, do you have an attic you can run the ethernet cable or do you want an ethernet cable kind of throughout your house? You might already have ethernet through your walls, which makes it a lot easier to do this. So if you have ethernet through your walls, you definitely wanna do this. This is typically the better way to go. But that's why wireless backhaul exists because you could literally plug the secondary one and then you're golden. But keep in mind that if you did want to do wireless backhaul, you could get better mesh systems that will provide better speeds on the secondary one. The Eero 7 is not the best for that. Okay, so now it comes to the same thing. You might be wondering, okay, well, now I have this. Can I expand my Ethernet ports? And the answer is yes. It's literally the, exactly the same thing that we did. We basically connect, we bring our switch. We connect it to here, and basically this purple ethernet cable goes to the switch. Again, connect any port you want, it doesn't matter. You have seven other usable ports that you can use. You can use all seven ports in your golden. You could also, if you wanted to, instead of going from, let's disconnect the secondary one real quick. What you could have done is instead of going from this zero to this zero, you could actually go from this zero to the switch. Let me let me like reduce one of these cables just so it's a little little more manageable. Okay. So you have your switch right here. You can actually go from this zero to the switch. Again, any port you want, doesn't matter. And then from this switch, you can go to this Eero. And let's say you had another Eero. 
right? So let's bring in my Eero Pro 60. Let's say you had another Eero, right? Well, you could go from, you could either go from this port to the other Eero, right here, or you could go from the switch to the other Eero. So I'm gonna just plug it into this port right here. Again, it doesn't matter which port I use. And then in the case of the Pro 6E, because this is a Pro 6E, we have a 2.5 gigabit port and a gigabit. Now, if we have internet speeds of up to gigabit, it doesn't matter which port I use because if I'm accessing the internet, if, if my internet speeds are gigabit, well, this can handle gigabit. But if my internet speeds are faster than a gigabit, let's say I have two gigabit sp speeds, because my switch is also capable of up to 2.5 gigabits, I want to plug it into the 2.5 gigabit port. And this now, again, gives the best possible speeds at this Eero and these other Eros as well. So I'm free to basically connect the switch to this Eero, to this Eero, or to this Eero, or to all three, and connect them to each other via wired backhaul. You could also, which is a question I get asked, can you mix wired and wireless backhaul? Absolutely. You can have this Eero go to the switch, this Eero, and then you can just have this Eero, the Pro 6E, just connect it to power, let's say 20 to 40 feet away, and it will automatically connect and expand your Ethernet, pretty much your Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home. So you could do that as well. Now, the most common question that I get asked is, can I connect, so let's unplug these cables, can I connect my switch directly to my modem and then from my switch go to my other Eros? And the answer is no. The first Eero must connect to the modem directly. This Eero is the main router and it decides, it, it has a network address translation and it, it basically, it decides, it tells all the other stuff what to do. So it needs to be the first one hooked up to the modem. So if you go from modem to switch, then to Eero, well, this Eero can't control the switch and it's just not going to work um, the way that it, the Eero must, the most important thing is this Eero connected to this one directly. After this, you have a lot of leeway, a lot. You could go from this Eero to this Eero, you could go from this one to the switch to this one, you could go from this one to the switch to the other one and then have this one wirelessly connected. You have a lot of options after this. These two are the most important things. So after that, you have a lot of, you have a lot of options after that. So, so essentially that wraps it up. If you guys found this video helpful, smash that subscribe button. I have more videos like it coming out. If you guys have questions or comments, please leave it in the comment sections below. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.